Big news on Saturday. David Sanders Jr., the top-ranked offensive tackle in the country, has committed to Tennessee. This is big news for the Vols, obviously, because they got the guy that every ranking service considers the best offensive tackle in this class. But it's also big news because it might continue a trend that signals a change in how college football recruiting operates. So here's how recruiting worked for most of college football history. Schools would go to places usually fairly close to where they are and try to get players and build a roster that way. It worked that way really until about the turn of this century. And then in the 2000s, there was a new phenomenon. You saw the world get a little bit smaller where some of the best schools were going nationwide to get some of the best players. And it wasn't just one or two. So it wasn't just Notre Dame that would do that. It was Alabama would do it. Ohio State would do it. When Kirby Smart got to Georgia, he started doing it. And the ones that had success and also had success making first round draft picks, well, they started collecting almost all of those players. So at the positions where the players are very rare, very hard to find. And that's like offensive tackle, defensive tackle. These are giant humans. They do not grow on trees. So David Sanders, for example, is six, five and a half. He's 276 pounds. He can carry 30, 40 more quality pounds as he gets older. He is an athlete if you watch him play. He is not a giant guy who happens to be playing football. He is a monster athlete. These people are very hard to find. And for a while there, they were only going to a few schools. So Greg Little committed to Ole Miss for the 2016 class. He was the number one overall offensive tackle recruit. The next year, 2017, Alex Leatherwood goes to Alabama. That starts a streak of Alabama, Ohio State, or Georgia getting that number one offensive tackle every year until last year. Perhaps it's the NIL era making a difference because let's be real that is affecting these recruitments it affected david sanders jr's recruitment it definitely affected jordan seaton's recruitment jordan seaton was the number one offensive tackle last year he's going to colorado he's probably going to start for colorado this year so perhaps this is allowing schools that did not have a chance at these players before to get them and you have to have players like this if you want to win national titles it is a big reason why Alabama has been so successful. It's a big reason why Georgia has been so successful, why Ohio State's in the mix every single year. You have to be able to get these kind of players. And for the most part, most schools have been shut out because those guys all want to go play with other guys like them and at places where they know they're developing first-rounders. Now, Tennessee can say, hey, look, David Sanders, you're the highest-ranked offensive line recruit we've had since Darnell Wright in 2019. He's the last five-star to sign with Tennessee. Darnell Wright was a first-round draft pick in 2023. So they can say that. Josh Heupel and his staff can say, hey, we coached a first-round draft pick. Now, what's interesting about Josh Heupel and Tennessee is they have yet to recruit out of high school an offensive lineman who has started for them. And I think that's going to change in 2025 because you still have a lot of older guys that, that signed with the Jeremy Pruitt staff that will be out of eligibility. They're going to be gone. And then there'll be hypo signees that are, that are playing, but it's a very interesting situation. David Sanders could be one who plays very quickly. Now it's offensive line. So there's no guarantee anybody plays immediately, but we have seen that with a lot of different players where they have been able to jump in and play right away. Jordan Seaton, I just mentioned is probably going to do that this year. Uh, Caden Proctor, the 2023 number one overall recruit, he started at left tackle for Alabama the whole season. Now, it was a little rough in the early going, but by the end of the season, he had found his legs and he was doing great. So it's certainly possible that that happens. And if it, if it does, Tennessee would have a nice little bookend situation at tackle. Because remember, Tennessee got a transfer this year from Lance Hurd, who's an LSU tackle, who got stuck behind two really good offensive tackles in Will Campbell and Emory Jones, who are both juniors this year. So Lance Hurd, who's a sophomore, wanted to be able to get on the field before his junior season. He's at Tennessee now as the starting left tackle. So 
we're seeing better development on the offensive line from Tennessee. This is what Josh Heifel and company have to prove. This is what they had to fight against, overcome, because people keep saying, hey, these are Jeremy Pruitt recruits. And, and Jeremy Pruitt's staff did a very good job of signing offensive linemen, including the aforementioned Darnell Wright. It's not like the Derek Dooley staff where in Derek Dooley's last year, he signed zero offensive linemen, which I believe is a crime in most states if a coach signs zero offensive linemen in a class. Well, looks like Tennessee's going to sign a big one in the class of 2025. David Sanders Jr., the number one offensive tackle in the country. He is headed to Knoxville. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.